Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range in the bitter cold to talk about a rifle we've gotten a lot of requests for. That rifle is the Spanish FR8. It's a bolt action Mauser. It's based on the M43 Spanish Mauser rifle that was originally chambered in 8mm, but it's kind of a stopgap measure, and we want to talk about that in today's video. But we can't do that without starting off with the whole reason why the FR8 came into existence, and that would be because of this rifle here. This is the Model C. Uh, this is a Spanish Set Me 308 rifle. This is the same rifle that the Germans would come to license and call it the G3, or what we know as the HK91 here in the United States, the semi-auto variant. So this, this is the gun that started it all, and it came about in the 1950s, just after World War II. Uh, the Spaniards started to work on a new military infantry rifle, and they wanted it in, chambered in NATO, which is 762 by 51 and they had the assistance of some German engineers that um, helped them use the roller locking mechanism that this rifle employs, which then went on to become the HK series of firearms, the 91, 93, and 94. So we're gonna start off shooting this rifle, then we're gonna talk about the similarities between this and the FR8 and why the Spaniards even created the FR8. Today we're starting off with some federal ammunition. It's just some American Eagle. And they do send us the ammunition for free. Go ahead and charge the weapon. It's just like any other HK rifle you may be familiar with. One of the biggest differences though is this one does have a push pin lower. So it's a push pin here in the front. It's not clipped and pinned like most of the rifles you would be used to. But aside from that, just a beautiful rifle. Century made a clone of this gun. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty bad clone, but it was a clone built off parts kits. But again, this is an all original gun. So let's shoot her here for you guys. All right, so they don't lock open on the last shot fired. Ugh. But that's the Spanish set me in action. Now let's take a look at the FR8 and talk about some of the similarities between the two rifles, even though one is a roller delayed rifle while the other one is a bolt action. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the FR8. This rifle was a stopgap measure that was employed during the early 1950s because the Spaniards were trying to get the Model C into production, the rifle we just showed you at the opening of the video. They're trying to get it into production, into the field, into the hands of their soldiers, but they could not produce them fast enough to do that. So they thought, as many nations have done in the past, well, why can't we just take existing stocks of weapons we have an abundance of and convert them to the new caliber, which is what they did. During the Second World War, the Spaniards had a rifle called the M43, which was a Mauser-based rifle, very similar to the K98 Mauser used by the German forces during World War II, and it was chambered an 8mm Mauser. Well, the simple solution for them was to create the FR8 that would be used as a training rifle for the troops, then as those Model C's started to come online, they would get issued a Model C, and then these would be relegated to, um, you know, guard duty, police duty, um, militias, whatever. It would be nice just to have these on standby, and that's how they used them after they were used as training rifles for a period. So there's a number of modifications that took place to this rifle uh, from its original configuration of the M43, which we'll sit down at the table and talk about here in a minute. But the most important difference is the fact that it's been rechambered to 7.62x51 NATO, which is obviously the NATO standard that the Spaniards wanted to be compliant with. So they changed it over, put a 308 caliber barrel in the thing, so it has a brand new barrel, holds five rounds in the magazine. Magazine spring on this one's just a little bit old. Now these things wound up coming into the US as surplus um, 
just after the 80s because these things stayed in service until probably eh, the mid 80s or so, I believe. And after that, the Spaniards were ditching them. They were moving to the 5.56 set me, which we'll show you a quick glimpse of here in a minute. And they wanted to get rid of all the 308 stuff. That included these, and a lot of them wound up here in the United States so we could enjoy them. All right, let's go ahead and shoot the FR8 for you guys. It's a very light, handy little rifle. It's even shorter feeling than the, uh, the K98 Mauser, which is one of my favorites. This thing is amazingly light. The action is not the smoothest either, I'll tell you that right now, especially on a full magazine. So there you go. That's the rifle being shot. Now let's take a closer look at the rifle. Let's look at the markings. Let's look at the sights. Let's look at the muzzle devices out here on the end and talk about those and um, how similar they are and why they are the way they are as compared to the Set Me rifle, the roller delayed rifle. The FR8 has many features that the soldiers would eventually find on their set me um, roller delayed rifles. And that's what makes this somewhat unique in terms of military bolt action rifles. Now the Spaniards had two different versions, well, yeah, two different versions of the Mauser conversions. They did conversions to earlier small ring Mauser actions, and then they did conversions to large ring Mauser actions, the K98s which they called the M43, which is what became the FR8. So the FR7 would be a small ring Mauser and the FR8 would be a large ring Mauser. Most commonly though, at least in my experience, you're gonna find the FR8s based on the large ring Mauser action. So let's start off by um, talking about the action itself. So as I've already mentioned, it's a Spanish M43 eight millimeter Mauser action that was converted to 308 or 762 by 51 NATO. And they did a, a few things to accomplish that. But first let's take a look at the action itself. It has a straight bolt handle. It's not downturned like the German K98. And the serial number here on the bolt does actually match the receiver. We'll take some pictures and show those to you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble it, which is just like a, uh, a K98 or any other Mauser of that era. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this little lever out by my index finger here. I'm just gonna pull this lever out, pull the bolt back, pops out. Now you can clean the rifle from the breech as you should. Okay, so let's start at the rear and move forward at, at the changes that were made to the FR8. First, the most obvious is this large sight tower that's, um, that appears back here that is a di diopter sight, which would be very similar to what the soldiers were going to find on their Setme rifles, the roller delayed rifles, when they got those issued to them. So this sight was intended to give them the exact same sight picture. Right now it's set up with the 100 yard V-notch. If I turn it one click to the right, that would be 200 meters, and then you're gonna have a peep aperture. Turn it one more time, that's now 300 meters. And then you have to go all the way back the opposite direction to 400 meters. So it's very similar to what, again, you're gonna find on HK91, set me, rifles like that. Now the next thing that the Spaniards had to do was, I don't have any pointing device here. Actually, maybe I do. I always have a pointing device. It's called a round. <laughs> so right here, let's see if Jason can get a shot of this. Right here in the front of the magazine and the follower, there's a little spacer in there. The eight millimeter Mauser is much longer than the 308. So, well, technically the 7.62 NATO. So they had to put a little spacer inside there so the rounds wouldn't ride forward. Now the guns would probably still cycle and work without that little spacer, but the Spaniards went ahead and put that spacer in there for the troops. Next, you're gonna notice the rear sight has been removed and we have a new handguard up here. Pretty much everything forward here has been completely replaced, including the barrel. So they were rebarreled and new stock upper. I'm not sure if they converted, it almost looks like they chopped the original M43 stocks down uh, here and made use of those, then came up with just a new handguard on the top, which would account for the color differences. So you will see that the rifle's been shortened, has a new barrel, and this is where things get really interesting with the rifle. 
Now the diopter sights on a bolt action are really cool, but this is another really cool aspect of it. So let's talk about this area right here on the FR8. So it looks like this is a gas tube running down here, but actually this tube stops right about here. It's a container that you could put a cleaning kit in, a survival kit, and whatever, you know, dear John letters, dear Jane letters, whatever you want. Uh, it, but the intent was to mimic the Set Me rifle. And that means this is supposed to be a representation of the cocking tube of the Set Me, except inverted and put upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down here, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with the actual Set Me. So at the set me, here's your cocking tube, and you'll notice this little device right there in front of the front sight that's above the barrel. Well, it's below the barrel on the FR8. That's your bayonet mount. So in essence, they inverted it and put this bayonet adapter so the same bayonet could be used on the FR8 that would ultimately be used on the set me. Also, you'll notice the two rifles have the, the same front sight tower. They have the same adjustments, the same post, the same everything. So it, again, it's going to give the soldier the same sight picture as best as they could with the bolt action rifle. And last but not least, well, almost last, you'll notice that both rifles have rings right here, and that is for a 22 millimeter NATO grenade, rifle grenade. And then we have the muzzle device, which is very similar on both rifles. And the muzzle device, the flash hider, on the bolt action was intended to duplicate that of the set me. Has a wire cutter. I'll show you how that works here in a moment. Has a wire cutter notch in the front, flash suppressor. And it just so happens that I have a practice grenade and I can show you how it was intended to be used with the gun. So you would set that on the rifle, load a blank firing, or I'm sorry, grenade firing blank into the firearm, and then you would fire it and you would launch the 22 millimeter grenade. All right, not gonna fire it today because I don't wanna go try to find the thing in the woods. Here I also have a well-used set me bayonet, and you can see how the bayonet would be affixed to the FR8, just like that. It's the exact opposite of the set me, which would have it on top of the barrel, but it gives you the same functionality. All right, so let's pop the bayonet off and let's take a look at this under lug here, because here I've already told you that this is a storage compartment. So how do you access it? Well, there's a little detent right here on the bottom and I can push that detent in. Now these can be a little bit fickle getting them out, <clears throat> but you push the detent in with the tip of a bullet and then it should just pop right out, which it did. Then this will unscrew, and there's your storage compartment, okay? But primarily, this was used as a, um, a device to mount a bayonet. So this is kind of like, oh, well, let's just go ahead and put a storage compartment in there too while we're at it. Put it back together, you just simply slide it in, press that little detent down, and then rotate it till it locks, and voila. I like to loosen this up a little bit and back it up against the front of the rifle there so it stays snug. So that is, in essence, what makes the FR8 the FR8. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt back in the gun. Just like the Mauser, the M43 before it, when the gun runs dry, the gun tells you the gun's empty because the bolt stays to the rear. All right, I think that's pretty much everything. I think I mentioned that it does have matching serial number here on the receiver and on the bolt. I don't know if Jason can zoom in. And then there's a crest on here. It's kind of worn a little bit. But you can see the, the serial number there on the receiver. And then you can see the serial number here on the bolt. And I want to say this, it's kind of hard to read. Looks like it might say 1954. Uh, I've seen a lot of them from the 1952 era, uh, but it's kind of hard to read. So keep in mind that they refinished old rifles that may have been, you know, like this one, is a little bit rough. So it looks like it might have a little bit of surface pitting and things like that. They stripped them down, just refinished them, gave them a basic park, and then sent them out. All right, enough of that. Oh, wait, you know what? I want to tell you about one more thing while I'm talking about it. I almost overlooked it. 
So right here you have a sling swivel in the front. If you take a look at the set me rifle, ugh, let me lay this here for you guys, you'll notice you have the exact same ring up here intended to be used with, with what we commonly call the HK hook. All right, so this exact same sling was intended to be used with the set me as would be used with the FR8. Coming back to the rear of the rifle, you're gonna see the original sling swivel from the M43 still sitting there, but this was added to the stock so that you could attach the sling to the rear so the rifle would carry the same way as the set me that the troop would eventually have in their possession. Okay, I think I've covered off on pretty much all the important points of the FR8. Now, let's go take a look at how that wire cutter works that's present right here on the end of the muzzle. I've had people ask me, how does it work? I'm gonna show you. <laughs> the safety, I should probably talk about, even though I've talked about Mausers before here on the channel, with this tab all the way over to the left, the gun is on fire. So if I pull the trigger, the gun would fire. I'm gonna go ahead and recock the rifle. And now if I put it up in the top position, I can still work the action and disassemble the gun. However, the trigger's disabled, the gun will not fire. Then if I rotate the safety all the way over to the right, it locks the bolt and disables the trigger. So that's the three positions of the safety on the FR8 or most military Mausers. All right, so let's go over here. Let's say we're a soldier and we come upon some barbed wire. Well, we don't have any barbed wire out here. We have some 14 gauge wire though, strung between these two trees. Now, if you take a look at the front of this, the business end, you'll see two notches cut on either side of the muzzle device. Those two notches are intended to be pressed into the wire. All right, first you're gonna to have to have a loaded rifle. So I'm gonna put one round of ammunition into the rifle. Go ahead and make the weapon ready to fire. And now I'm just gonna simply press the rifle into the wire and pull the trigger. And there you go, wire's cut. Pretty uh, <laughs> simple, right? I know people have said, oh, they thought that it was intended to get onto the wire and twist the wire. No, guys, it's very uh, elegant in its simplicity. You simply press the wire into the notches, put a round in the chamber, pull the trigger, and boom, you've cut the wire. But you've also alerted the enemy you're coming through the wire, so it's a trade-off. Probably not the most used device on any of the guns. The Model C or the Set Me would have also had that and does have that on its muzzle as well. Today we're gonna to be shooting over frozen water. It's not water, it's now ice. So uh, for the safety sallies out there, this is my hole, I dug it, and I know it's on the other side of it. So yeah, we're just gonna put the lead back where we found it, which is in the ground. But hey, what we really wanna talk about is the FR8. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the rifle up. Now, one thing that I've noticed about my copy, and this may not be true of all FR8s, is when I'm trying to run the action from the shoulder, it'll hang up right there. I have to really pull hard for it to cycle. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm pulling down on the bolt because it's in my shoulder or what, but both Jason and I have the exact same issue. But if I run the action from, from the hip, it's nice and buttery smooth. And we don't get failures to feed, which can happen if I try to run the action too quickly or if I try to run it from the shoulder quickly, especially. It'll, it'll almost try to double feed. See, it's nice and smooth when I load it that way. Up here, I can't do it. I bring it down here and it opens right up. So it has to be some sort of a leverage thing, which I, I'm not used to having that type of an issue with a Mauser action. So other than that, it seems to be a mostly reliable rifle, but I definitely would like to be able to cycle the gun from the shoulder, which is what I'm used to doing with my other Mausers. Well, this would be a lot easier if I had a stripper clip. It does have a stripper clip guide. I just didn't bring any out today because I'm special. Now we'll go ahead and run it from the, or from the hip 
this time. And uh, flawless function. All right, so there you have it. Inevitably, I'm going to get asked, Mac, where can I pick up a FR8 at? Well, they're not being imported into the country anymore, so it's a collector's market. That means you're going to have to jump over to Gun Broker and see if one's being listed and just get into the auction and see what you can get it for. I don't recall what I've paid for this one. I've had it for quite some time. I'm guessing I probably paid around 300 bucks for it, but today's market, I don't know. I haven't checked in a long, long time, but that's where you're going to find them for sale. Guys, if you'd like to continue to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We take no industry money, and we are 100% viewer supported. So swing by Patreon, just check it out. There's a link down below in the description, and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Also, another great way to support us here at the channel is to pick up a t-shirt from our Forge from Freedom t-shirt store, which there is a link in the, t in the description down below, in the t-shirt down below. And also, be sure to check us out at Copper Custom, which is where you'll probably be able to find some of those L carbines uh, here very soon. And that's at coppercustom.com. And last but not least, check us out on Twitch. We are Twitch Gamers. You will find me and Jason over there uh, streaming. And if you're a Patreon, you can actually jump in the games with us and play with us while we're streaming. Boy, that came out wrong. Anyway, guys, thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. This is the Set Me Model L, which would ultimately replace the Model C in military service. They also made an LC, which had a retractable stock. This one's chambered in 5.56, and it's also roller delayed, just like the Set Me C that it replaced in service. It also has the attachments up here for the 22 millimeter NATO grenade launching, and you have a pronged flash hider, Back here you have a large sight block integrated into the sight block. Right here this is your manual bolt hold open button. So you pull your bolt to the rear, push this button, and that uh, locks the bolt to the rear. I, am, I have in my hand some M193 ball from Federal. And again, we like to thank the guys at Federal for sending us the ammunition. You can pick some up at LEX Ammo if you'd like to pick some up of your own. And we do have a discount code down below. Go ahead and insert the magazine into the gun. I can hit the release, put the charging handle forward, hit the release. It's on the rear sight, which is kind of awkward. Chambers around, and the gun is now ready to fire. This is probably one of the softest shooting 5.56s I've ever shot. Uh, this was manufactured by HMG again, and we will probably have some of these available again at Copper Custom here in the next couple of weeks. So watch the Copper Custom website if you want an opportunity to pick up one of these military oddities. and it does not lock open. So the last shot fired to lock it open. I'm gonna push with my thumb here, pull the bolt to the rear and push it, and take the magazine out, which is hung up on the sling, and the weapon is now clear. So again, that's a very cool piece of Spanish military history, and it's kind of a cool gun to have in the collection.